Hey, we're back with another episode of Before You Buy. Why did I start the video like this? I don't know, I'm going crazy. It's a busy fall season filled with games. And as you know, this is a show where me, Jake, gives you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. And today we're talking about The Outer Worlds. This is a game I was really looking forward to. And now, after spending quite a bit of time with it, thanks to a review copy, I can now say it pretty much does what I was hoping it would do. The Outer Worlds is cool as hell and worth checking out if you're a fan of this genre. Now, this genre I speak of is specifically a first-person shooter RPG. Kinda pioneered by Fallout 3 and New Vegas, this style of game revolves around shooting and action, yeah, but the real core foundation, the, the heart of it, is a deep, classic RPG system. And more than one, of course. Stats, items, branching conversations, tons of NPCs, and lots of gameplay systems and scenarios begging to be messed with and manipulated. Outer Worlds has all of this. It's a distinctly Obsidian RPG. Now, the developers Obsidian Entertainment are, of course, known for stuff like Knights of the Old Republic 2, Neverwinter Nights 2, Alpha Protocol, Pillars of Eternity, and of course, Fallout New Vegas. Not to be like too reductive here and, and boil this game down or anything, but basically, here's the elevator pitch. If you loved Fallout New Vegas, you'll probably love this. Heck, even some folks behind the original Fallout games have worked on this game. The DNA is clearly here. The Outer Worlds takes what we love about games like that and drops it in a new, uh, completely corporately controlled space future with a dash of Bioshock weirdness and it all absolutely works. Sure, it may not always feel like a brand new 2019 AAA game with ultra-realistic graphics and ray tracing and crazy new gameplay features and microtransactions. Look, it doesn't reinvent any wheels here, but that also means it's a straight-up good old-fashioned video game. In it, you're a space colonist who was on a colony ship that was unfortunately lost in space, and you were left frozen in cryostasis for many, many years. You're revived by a friendly face and an, a new ally. Uh, there's a conspiracy afoot that could affect the fate of this halcyon colony that the people of these worlds inhabits. But uh, really, the gist is that you create your character with a okay, you know, passable character creator. You pick some stats and off you go onto the first of a few planets you can explore. Of course, you're gonna shoot and kill things. Uh, people, robots, creatures, you name it. And thankfully for an RPG focused game, the combat feels pretty good. Gunplay is satisfying with a good amount of sound, vibration feedback, and recoil, but you still get the feel of like, you know, the RPG numbers putting in the work as you whittle down an enemy's health. Now, I suspect that some people might not quite like how it feels TTK-wise. You know, that happens sometimes with these types of games, so that's definitely a little bit more towards it being a matter of taste. But because you've been in cryosleep for so long, uh, according to the story, your perception of time is a little messed up, so you can, with a cooldown meter, slow down time temporarily. Now, if you don't move, it lasts longer, but as you do stuff, it goes down more. Now you can target different parts of an enemy, like if you move your cursor over them and choose to inflict different statuses, like maiming someone or blinding someone. And it's a, just really a great mix of like that style stuff from Fallout, but like with the tactical pausing of a classic Bioware game. You know what I mean? It's a really good blend. But melee even, like melee attacks even feel like Something that's not quite an afterthought, you can block and swing your weapons. It's mostly pretty mindless, you know, attacking and just mashing it, but there's some nice gore and some hits that actually feel like they hit. Now, not only that, but it's it's how you choose to play. Like, there's a good amount of variety and types of melee weapons to pick up, too. You know, from swords to staffs and hammers and more. Uh, the stealth is one aspect that doesn't feel as super fleshed out, sort of. It leaves a bit to be desired because it's just super simple when it comes to crouching around, moving around, stealing stuff, and avoiding the eyesight of enemies and hiding in bushes. But where it makes up for it in that regard is the disguise system. Wow, I, like a bit into the game, you acquire a hologram system that can, provided you collect the right item for it, camouflage yourself with the uniform of an enemy or another faction, of which there are many, and you have a standing with each of them, uh, but you wanna blend in in their restricted areas. And it works automatically once you go in, but areas where you use it sort of become kinda like a fun mini game. The disguise is on a cooldown and a meter depletes as you go. 
screw up around the place you're trying to blend in and you'll be confronted by a character. If you're good enough, you can talk your way out of the situation. Uh, you have a limited number of strikes as people get more and more suspicious <laughs> and it can just result in some pretty hilarious stuff especially when you're dealing with robots. Then of course, you know, you could always just be not smooth and just shoot your way out. And that's a good example for the rest of the systems, like especially dialogue. It's my favorite aspect of the game. Dump skill points into your dialogue group and then you'll be able to talk your way out of situations, lie and trick people, charm others, and just generally do a lot of cool stuff. And it works with the world because the dialogue is good and the voice acting most of the time is decent and the humor generally pretty damn good and, and not annoying. But the amount of dumb people in this game is pretty great. And I don't mean like, like plot hole dumb or, or, or bad artificial intelligence. I mean characters who are completely gullible or unintelligent or just beaten down by this corporate world that they'll believe anything. And I had a lot of fun just like building a roguish, dashing character who could out talk everyone. It was fun. And that's where the magic is with this game. The character builds themselves. I don't really mean like loot really and stuff like that. Like I said, the actual character creator is just kind of whatever. Armor types look really cool, but it's just full of suits and helmets. So it's kind of limited and a little disappointing. Thankfully, some weapon crafting and weapon add-ons kind of make up for that. Uh, but really I'm talking about how you build out your character through the RPG systems. It's awesome. And I, I think it's really the highlight of the game and why it's so fun. Cause like, yeah, the worlds are fun and interesting, but it's really what you do to it all and how you do it that's interesting. Do you want to lock pick and hack your way through the world? Go for it. You know, maybe bash your way through, snipe your way through, efficiently heal yourself, be an engineer who can better repair and craft better stuff for your weapons and armor. Do it how you want. But the other part of it is just like how the world reacts to it all. Now leveling up your character is very satisfying. Every time you reach a new level, you can dump multiple points into groupings like defense, stealth, dialogue, stuff I mentioned before. As these areas get enough points to certain thresholds, you unlock more active and passive stuff surrounding them. And then finally, after a further threshold, you can focus and double down on the individual stuff within them. Then every other time you level up, you're awarded a perk point to spend in a tree filled with stuff like uh, more health, faster cooldowns, carrying capacity, stuff like that. And missions are overflowing really with opportunity even side quests to a point. There's a lot to do in your journal as it's filled with side quests and quests really quickly. And thankfully, you do have a lot of ways to solve your problems. RPGs have done this all before, of course, this isn't new, but I just really enjoy it here, the implementation of it, and I just think it's, it's worth pointing out and it's one of the best aspects of the game. Maybe you wanna be a better leader and dump points into leadership areas, giving you better control and eventually unlocking perks and special abilities for your companions. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, companions. Uh, throughout the course of your adventure, you know, very similar to other Obsidian games, you can meet and recruit or even deny multiple companions and bring them along with you on your adventure. Uh, they're all unique and can do different stuff and fight for you. If you have someone that's charismatic, they can even jump in and move conversations for you in different directions, which is a really nice touch I love as someone who rolls a dialogue character. You can manage who they attack and what weapons and armor they use too. There's a lot to manage. They also get their own spots on your ship, the Unreliable, and you can talk to them whenever you want and pursue their own personal side missions. There's a lot here in a game that's, you know, not insanely massive. Worlds are interesting and to be explored, but they're not like a gigantic Skyrim map by any means. This is a game you can knock out in 20 to 30 hours, depending on how you play and if you like to do a lot. But I, I think the character building systems warrant replayability like big time. I really emphasize that here. I say that sometimes, but here it, it means a lot. Well, what the game lacks in insane super RPG length it makes up for it in the quality stuff packed to the gills here. Uh, there's a lot to see and do, and it's all really fun, especially considering the amount of different ways, story scenarios, uh, missions, and character builds, all that stuff, how it can all go down. Every playthrough is seemingly gonna be pretty different. Now, visually, it's often a little bit underwhelming. This is the PC version. Uh, some environments dazzle, while others feel kind of bland and dead and not in a creative way. It's a bit inconsistent, but I'm glad that characters look and act pretty great considering you spend a lot of time talking to people. And also, it's a colorful game and I always think we need more of those too. But the music 
is the true unexpected highlight. A lot of it is a little old school detective mystery sounding, and it fits in this like weird, charming sci-fi world big time. It's just an interesting universe they've set up, one completely run by corporations, and the game clearly takes an anti-corporate stance, very on the nose, but it does it with like some pretty great humor and creativity. There's a lot. It's actually surprisingly deep. And in short, it's a complete video game. It's a single player game. And I, I think those of you that might like complain that gaming is getting worse nowadays, well, hey, here's a good one. Maybe you should think about showing up for it if it's your type of genre. But of course, this is a before you buy. You know how this goes down by now. I gave you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinion. Now I wanna hear yours down in the comments below. We're putting out this video a little bit before the game's release, but I wanna know if you're anticipating it. Honestly, we put out one more video on this game, just things you need to know, and the response was pretty great. So despite the game not getting like tons and tons of marketing or buzz, I think there is a fan base for it. Like I said, people that love this genre, I think it might be for them. And I'm curious to see what you guys do think about it. So let us know in the comments how you're feeling. If you enjoyed this video though, clicking the like button is the best way you can help us out. Really, we would appreciate it. And if you're new, consider subscribing and maybe hitting that notification bell because we put out videos every single day. But hey, as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.